Hello, and welcome to a new series where I will be running through PyOpenGL, so doing OpenGL stuff in Python. If you've been watching my other videos, you might say, well, hey, you have a, a whole playlist where you're doing Vulkan, and Vulkan's more advanced than OpenGL. It builds on everything that OpenGL does. It's kind of the way things are going in the future. Why still do OpenGL. One answer is that OpenGL is probably not going away anytime soon because it is easier to use than Vulkan. You can get things moving a lot more quickly. These videos will be live coding, so you'll get to see me and it'll, it'll be a little, a little more rambly if that's possible. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to install everything that we need. For this session, we'll just go do a Google open pi open gl and then there's this website oh wow that's cool that's pretty pretty dank we've got some some nice graphics but as we can see here as you would expect with any python library the easiest way to do it is with a pip install so it's pip install pi open gl and pi open gl accelerate now for some reason i've never been able to get this pi open gl accelerate thing to work it just doesn't work that's okay so we'll open up VS Code and, you know, the normal stuff, make a new folder wherever we want to do it. And we'll just open up a new terminal and we'll paste that command in, pip install. Now this should tell me that, yeah. Okay, so I've already got this in my system. So it says, hey, we've already got it. That's fine. The next step is for this tutorial, I'm going to use Pygame. So we do a Google search for Pygame, and there's some instructions here. It's, yeah, pretty much pip install Pygame. So if we go back here, we go pip install Pygame, and it says, hey, we've already got it. And um, as you may know, Pygame recently changed from um, 1.9 point something, whatever, to 2.0. That's cool. Okay, so I guess we're ready to start. So let's create a new file. And the goal of this file will just be to get a window up with a color in it. So we'll call this window.py. Cool. Okay. First thing we'll do is we'll do our import statements. So we'll say uh, import. Um, I like to give this no. I like to give this the nickname PG, um, just shorten it a bit. Um, and we also want to import everything from OpenGL. So we'll say from So um, this type of import, generally it's a good idea to only to only do that once. Um, that type, it's called a wildcard import. It just basically imports everything. Um, and the issue, okay, so the, the benefit of doing a wildcard import is we don't need to prefix names. So for example, here with Pygame, if I wanna use a module from Pygame, I'll have to say pygame dot or pg dot something. Um, but because I've done a wildcard import on OpenGL, then I can just type in the name of the OpenGL function and that works just fine. But um, obviously, if you import too many modules from different creators um, as wildcards, then those namespaces will start to clash with each other. You'll have, you know, the same name for different functions. Hmm. Okay, so... Um, probably want to wrap this up in a class. Hmm. Why is that not? Yeah, let's, let's just go with this. Okay, so no, this is this is just throwing me for a bit because normally Python automatically indents, but it's not today, which probably means I've done something wrong, but let's see. Okay, so let's initialize our class. 
uh, our app. So the first thing we want to do is we want to um, initialize Pygame. Why not write some comments? Okay. Cool. Um, so initializing Pygame, um, you can send some options um, telling Pygame what you want to initialize, but if you just call init with nothing else, it will just initialize everything. Uh, okay, so what do we want to do? Now we want to set up the screen. So we'll go display. Okay. So uh, display set mode. Um, the first thing we pass in is a size and I'll go with the classic um, 640 by 480. And then we need to tell um, Pygame that we're using OpenGL. So we'll go pg.opengl. Um, and as well as this, if we're using OpenGL, we need to use a double buffer um, display. Cool. Okay, cool. Another thing we'll do is we'll create a clock um, instance, and this clock instance will be used for um, doing frame rate calculations, basically. Okay. So, what's the next thing we want to do? Well, we should probably. Okay, so now we'll go. Okay, so um, if I run this thing, well, you know, set it up properly and then run it, it will run just fine um, because calling this PG OpenGL flag will create what's called an OpenGL context. In other words, it will start the whole OpenGL thing. Um, but there is one setting that we'll need at this point, and that is the. Um, oops. And that is the clear color. So that's saying um, when we um, refresh the screen, <clears throat> what color do we want to set everything to? Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. Let me just come up with a color right now. I'm literally just making this up. Okay, so we're going to go uh, zero. Uh, so with colors, they go between zero and one, um, where zero is, you know, none of the component at all, and one is the maximum possible amount. So it's pretty common, I think, to go zero to two five five, um, you know, because you've got eight bits for each color channel. But um, the benefit with this sort of thing is um, it can kind of be a bit more precise. So if, if for some reason um, OpenGL is using more bits per color, well then <clears throat> this will be able to specify that a little more clearly. Okay, so at this point, this function has initialized everything. Um, now let's call a main loop function. Oh, good. Now you're um, auto indenting. That's cool. Okay. So um, <clears throat> what we've got is we've then got a main loop function and okay. So I'll give the game away. So what we're going to do is first of all, we're going to create. Yeah. Why does it not? I don't know. Um, let me just test this really quickly. So this is, uh, what's, what have I missed? Okay. Oh, <laughs> ah, isn't it's, oh, wow. Cool. That's the wonders of, um, that's the wonders of live coding, isn't it? Okay. Oh, 
All right, awesome, cool. So now that's working. Okay, so I'll give the game away. The way this works is first we'll create an instance of the um, of the app, and then that will pretty much run itself. So after it initializes, it is then going to um, call the main loop function, and the main loop function will just keep the thing running. So the first thing we need to do is um, check for events. Okay. So Okay, so this um, Pygame event get um, really, uh, returns a, um, a list of all the events which are happening at, <clears throat> at any time. That is all of the keys which were pressed, um, the mouse movements, the mouse buttons, everything. Um, when we run this, it returns all of those and then kind of clears a queue of events. Um, and then the next time we run it, it will return the list of all the events which occurred since the last time the events were fetched. Um, okay, so now we can go... Okay. So if we get a quit event, um, in other words, the X has been pressed basically, then okay, fair enough. We'll set um, the running variable to false. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, refresh the screen. Okay, so what this does is it just calls the clear function on the color buffer. Um, we could be calling clear function on color buffer, depth buffer, stencil buffer, everything, but at the moment we're just using color. Okay, so then the next thing we'll need to do is we'll need to actually update the screen um, because we're using a double buffer system. And hopefully I'm getting this right, okay. Um, cool. So that is clearing the screen. Um, but remember, we also have that clock thing and we're going to have to work with that. So if I can spell, we're going to do some timing stuff. Um, okay. Um, so this tick just updates the timer and then we're going to go there. thing is, um, for some reason this gives a floating point number, so we're just going to convert that back to an integer. Um, and then we want a way to um, display our um, frame rate, so we'll put that in the caption of the window and we'll say FPS for frames per second. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. So what have we got? We've got the main loop running um, and we'll say, okay, um, well, when we end the main loop, then we want to um, call this, call a quit function, which basically um, 
just tears down everything. Um, at the moment, we haven't gotten much, so we can just go call the pie game quit um, function. But I guess as things get more complicated, there will be other kind of memory structures to disassemble and everything. Um, okay, so we enter our main loop, we run through the main loop. When the main loop exits, then we pop out here. So we will call um, quit at that point. Okay, now provided everything's been done correctly, this should work. And there it is. We got a, a wonderful window. So there we have it, my friends. Welcome to the joys of OpenGL. Cool. All right. Uh, well, let's leave that there and we'll continue at a later point. Bye.